on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Thanks for pointing Don't that worry. out. But Don't actually, worry. I wasn't sure whether these bands were still from Spring, because I know week one we're talking a lot about Spring, so whether they're about this, I don't know. It's from the Super Week. Twitch wasn't banned <laughs> last, but it's okay, Lee, it's fine. I'm here to help you. <laughs> I'm glad I've got you alongside me. Jax has been banned out. Well, we just saw him going huge in the last game. So first pick, what will the Super Hot crew use for this essential pick? has been typed in. It's Cassidin that was left open huh. and locked in for Selfie and a big smile on his face for that one. So to get Cassidin, we need to see what Rocket will respond with here. Of course, leaving Cassidin open, you you will expect it to be first pick. So you need to have something ready you're getting in, in exchange for giving this very, very strong first pick. Sure, there's also quite a lot of counter pick options, at least for Overpower, where he can try and destroy Selfie in the lane where he's been weak. Selfie as a laner has not been the strongest. It's when he gets out of the laning phase he starts doing work, not in the laning phase. We're gonna see maybe at least being locked in for Jankos. Jankos had a bad, bad game in game one up against uh, SK Gaming, I wanna say. I'm trying to think who they played yet. So many games to get Millennium to one. Millennium, of course, it was. Yes, that was the bad game they lost against. Millennium, but up against Gambit, he had a monster of a game. 3 0 8, I think he ended that one. Zaza's locking in Leona for Vanda, so they do have full engage. We're not going to see Syndra. <laughs> it's very risky, at least, against the likes of Leona, because you're so easy to, to just be locked down in the engage. But it's actually a champion for Vanda, which worked out really well for him. Last split, he didn't actually play it too much. He said, ah, my Leona is not good enough yet. I will need to practice it. Clearly, it's been working out for him now. And also Elise for Jankos. Been one of the junglers here. He was actually one of the few junglers who kept playing Elise throughout all the nerfs, and he still plays him. So Shivana locked in, a happy mimer there. So he seems fairly happy with his choice. Of course, Mr. Rala's also getting Lucian back to the old faithful for him. It's the champion he played the most throughout the spring split. So pretty standard for Super Hard Crew, of course, Shivana. The great thing about Shivana is she can perform so many different roles. She can engage the fight, she can split push, she can be this mega tank in the front line. And also her laning phase is fairly decent. She's not the strongest, but she's not the weakest either. So she has a lot of versatility as a champion. That's why as a top lane, she's such a such a good pick. And of course, Lucian, talk about it every time. One of the top AD carries. One of the very best AD carries. AD carries still not been selected by Rockat so far. We did have Graves momentarily shown. Looks like it may well be Trundle for the top lane for Zaza though up against that Shivana. And we're seeing whether Overpower is going to lock in Ariana in the mid lane. So Overpower going for a very strong lane here, and Kassadin, with his low damage in the early game, won't really be able to poke the Ariana because of her shield as well. And he can then return the damage. A lot of focus on auto-attacking the Kassadin every time he tries to pick a CS. So Overpower here, taking a very, very strong laner against, of course, Selfie on the Kassadin, and then Trundle in the top lane. It's the standard, at least here in Europe, counterpick towards Shivana because again, she gets the extra armor and magic resist, you steal it away from her, you become very strong yourself, you're gonna be stronger in the early game as well, and once you get the blade of the Rune King, you can really start split pushing against her. So Trundle, very, very strong pick, and Sasus, of course, played it quite a lot. Well, speaking of standard counterpicks, we do see Morgana locked in once that Leona's on the opposite side. Lee Sin also being picked up for Impaler. Well, wasn't convinced by Impaler's Lee Sin yesterday. We'll see if it's improved overnight. I'm a little bit scared of the lack of crowd control coming in from Super Hot Crew. Yes, okay, they can land the Binding or the Ultimate here from, from Morgana, but that's actually about it. So it's going to be hard for him to lock down targets of Rocket. It's going to be hard for him to deal with a Trundle running in your face. He's pretty much going to be 1v1 against Mr. Rallis and nothing to really stop him. And it could be a big issue for them. However, when it comes to the late game points with Cassidy and with Shivana, they can try and focus on split pushing a little bit and then once they actually get a kill in the team fight they can chase because Shivana is very mobile, Lee Sin of course and Cassidy is one of the best champions in the game are just chasing after kills. And then Graves of course locked in the final one for Sullivan. It's a champion we've seen very often here. You can see 50% of the pick rate already in the LCS but only a 25% win rate. Yeah, again Graves as a pick, he's a fine AD carry especially in the early game. If he gets to lane against Lucian he will do really well. He's very strong against Lucian in the lane. But when it comes to late game points, due to the low range, due to the fact he's more of a burst AD carry, it falls off for him. He can't really burst down a tank. Like Shivana jump in his face late game. He won't be able to have the same amount of damage, and that's where he falls off. Well, it is time once more to check your picks on LASports.com. And it looks like you've chosen Rockout by 84% to take the win. Of course, it was 85% for SK Gaming in the previous matchup. So I think they're doing well so far, the voters.
Yeah, I mean, Rocket in this game, very, very strong teamfight comp. Mm. If they get onto him, land the ultimate here from, from Overpower, pull them together so Selavar can fire away all his AoE burst onto them, they can do a lot of upfront damage. And then at the same time, you have Engage from, from Vando, you have the Peel coming in from both both the Elise and also the Orianna to help Selavar stay alive. And then you have the Mega Trundle, Mega Tank in the front. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to get underway for Game 5 of Super Week. Day 2 here in the European LCS Live in Cologne, Germany. Super Hot Crew playing as the blue team up against Rocket as the red team. And they are ready to go. We're seeing, actually, uh, it looks like looks like Overpower forgot to buy there, so he's had to go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, level 1-wise, Obviously, Cassidyne doesn't exactly bring too much to the table. Morgana, however, is a very good support. It seems for now, the Super Hot Crew just want to spread out, scout every single entrance. They can, of course, already put the wards down in case they want to go for a late invade. So far, though, both teams seem happy just staying back. Well, we will fail has gone with that spell, Thieves Edge, on Morgana. He wants to try and get some of those fights going. Meanwhile, as you see the uh, Relic Shield coming out for uh, Vander at the moment. Um, it's looking like neither of these teams wants to go for any invade. It's going to be a standard face-off in the uh, mid lane river. So if we do get the dual lanes down the bottom lane here, what we need to remember, of course, Black Shield will stop all the crowd control from Vander. So it's a very good spell. Morgana is a very good pick against Leona, especially when it comes to team fights. But in the laning phase, there is room for outplay from Vander. He can engage on one target, bait out the Black Shield, and then instantly switch over to the next target and stun lock them down. It's what they can do to set up a gank Opa almost interrupting Selfie. Well, he did, he did actually hit him, Selfie. It's okay, uh, hit from that clockwork wind up of Overpower. Managed to pull him back. And notice this here Flask, and also he just, Selfie also just recalled to buy an extra potion. He got the Flask. He's expecting to get a lot of poke in his lane here, so he wants to be able to sustain early on, get the levels going, because Overpower wouldn't even surprise me if he, if he ran attack damage rune to armor penetration to just harass with his auto attacks again and again onto Selfie. There we go. Blue buff start for Super Hot Crew on Impaler. And that is a red buff start by Yankos. Meanwhile, bottom lane. This is where we want to see Mr. Raleigh's getting engaged quickly with the Zenith Flame from Vanda. Vanda taking a big burst of damage though because he went in with all six minions still standing. So they instantly all turned on him along with Mr. Raleigh's and we will fail her. A lot of action here early on. Of course, there's no Black Shield from We Will Fail. It won't be able to stop the engage from Vander. They are going to even the lane out, however, so they should be hitting level 2 on the next wave here. About the same time, I mean, they just need to get a few more minions, and it's going to be hard, at least for Rocket now, to push it out. Early aggression, of course, with that soil being picked up. They don't need to be worried about that Dark Binding. Landing Vanda, though, once again, going a little too deep on that one. Taking a big burst of damage, having to chomp his way through that hill. And in the mid lane, just check the runes here. Opau is actually running mixed penetration, at least in his... Uh, Red marks, I believe it's red marks. Uh, so, a lot of damage now onto Selfie here with his auto attacks. Yeah, taking a beating. Biancos coming down towards the bottom. He's got level three already. Level two hit by both these bottom laners. He's going to go round the tri bush. It looks like Mitsumi Starales. Not sure if he spotted him out there. No, don't think he did. You can see Yankos going to come around. If he can land that cocoon, he will be first blood. Sorely does not come through. Zenith Blade doesn't land either. Dark Binding was repelled away. Missed already, though. It's, well, Rockout do back away. Super Hot Crew's bot lane were just sitting, waiting for something to happen. As soon as he saw the cocoon, instant just dashed away. Didn't want to take any chances. Even though Impaler was nearby, could have joined in. If they had baited out of fight, would have been too risky though, so decided not to go for it. As you mentioned, self, he was expected to take a beating, and that is certainly what is happening. Trying to build up that shield every time he gets that poke out towards him and overpower, not putting the damage down. At the moment he's bullying him forward and that's actually a back from Selfie. I'm not sure if he's going to bait that one. I think he is, but we can see Mr. Rallas once again getting locked up. Dark Binding does come through once again, turning the damage back around. Mr. Rallas taking low though. A lot of damage. I would actually like to have seen the Black Shield from We Will Fail at level 2 to stop the engage here because Vendor has been so aggressive early on. He has the level 3, however. Now we have the Black Shield. Ooh, Dark Binding once again. He'll gain that Tormented Soil doing the burning damage on Sullivan. And he sticks around for a little bit longer. But again, the mid lane now seems to be the focus target. Selfie getting aggressive of Overpower. Impaler getting locked up by that cocoon of Yankos. Yankos goes in towards him. Selfie's going to join the party. He hasn't hit level 6, though, so he can't manage to riff walk and try and catch on. Yankos has got the repel instead, has to flash on oh, the through. Kill. 
and the Q does not land. Meanwhile, you can see Selva, he was taken very low down the bottom. Super Hot Crew starting to come out on top in these engagements. Yeah, Selva took two bindings in a row down here in the bottom lane, so well done by We Will Fail, forcing him away from the lane. Even though Rocket were actually the aggressive part earlier and got a lot of damage onto Mr. Rylas, good bindings from We Will Fail. Selfie's got to be aware that there is someone waiting in the wings with overpower that low. It's going to be a dive on Zaz is in the top lane. Impaler comes around. He does manage to come on towards him, but he does get away with nice flash there and a lot of tower damage on towards Mima. They can't counter it, and it may well be the tower. Zaz's will back away. Impaler could try and land the Sonic Wave. He does. He goes in for it. Is he going to get enough damage down the burning from the red buff? Will not be enough. Yankos was there to back him up. So Subar crew didn't pick up the kill. However, they forced Sasas away from a very big wave that hit the tower here. So he's getting denied a lot of CS, a lot of experience. And Mima is fired an Impaler. Oh, Impaler very goes straight and gets a good burst down. Mr. Ral is going to get caught out. Uh, trying to block him back there. They can push it now. Impaler back to wait. And now, as you mentioned, they can push on towards that tower. Teleport from Sasas back towards the top lane to protect and clear that mini wave. So quite some action here, of course, Rocket's bot lane has been very aggressive in this game and also a very, very smart dive up in the top lane from Impaler. They didn't have to use any summoners to get out alive and even though they didn't get the kill, still deny a lot of CS. So smart move, making sure Mimer here in the early game, he can actually survive it and get past the annoying point where Trundle can trade really well with him. Well, that tier was picked up early, of course, by himself. He has to try and stack it as quick as possible. Meanwhile, we did see We Were Failure Mr. Riles going back as well as the AD of Salavat. So you can see both Vampire Acceptors being picked up. They had to go back earlier than expected, I think, for both those AD carries because it's been so lively in terms of aggression. Still only level four, and they've come for, what, two, three fights already? <laughs> It is definitely the supports carrying the lanes here. They're the ones with the engaged bindings from We Will Fail, of course. Vander lashing on to, to Lucian as well. But Overpower taking some damage. Selfie is level 6. Overpower is only level 5. Trying to go aggressive on towards him. That Shockwave will come out soon now. And Selfie's got to be careful. He's not caught out there. It is level 6. Tries to go for it straight away. The attack now. He pulls the Shockwave back in that Rip walk away from Selfie. The Ignite down. Oh. He's got him. Overpower will get first blood here. Is he not yep. going to be quite enough? Tries to get some life steal. Tries to get the shield but it wasn't quite close enough. So Selfie stayed around here, around Overpower, but as soon as he hit level six, it was too late. And he actually decided to Rift Walk towards the minion, so he was still in range of the ulti from Overpower. So very risky play by Selfie. Oh, and sidestep from We Will Failure. Didn't even realize it. Yankos was in that bush. Now he'll put the ward down, got away from that cocoon without knowing it. Still though, a lot of damage from trading back and forth down here. And again, Graves. One of the reasons people love to play this is very strong against Lucian in the laning phase, and it's what Rocket is really using to the full advantage. Well, Teddy's Blade came out a little late with the uh, Black Shield there on Mr. Rala, so the stun actually went through. Blue Buff will be gifted across to Selfie. He absolutely needs this one now that he's one kill down to overpower, and that's not something you want in a straight up 1v1, no help from the jungler. No, I'm still not sure. He could either, of course, take the safe route and just jumped over the wall early on, or he could even. He could have flashed the Shockwave from Overpower. He knew it was going to take a lot of damage. He delayed the flash, and then Overpower could just flash after him, ignite one auto attack. So, Selfie, playing very risky in the lane. Still doing fairly well on farm, at least. Maybe confidence is a little too high after that uh, previous game on Yasuo. It's Overpower. been his issue. The laning phase has been the issue for Selfie. Twisted Fate yesterday against Kerb on Zex. It was the same thing. He was very low. He would run in and try and stun him because Impaler was coming, and he just ended up dying for it. And it's Try and make the biggest of plays. He wants to make the big plays for sure. Trying to be the faker. Make the faker playmaker. Not quite enough for him. Mr. Rales once again locked up. Zenith Blade catching on him. We Will Fader has held the Dark Binding. And Rocket knew that one. That's why they didn't go too close to that tower. But again, Rocket, every time they engage, they take very little damage. I mean, there's only a few hits on to Vander and he can back away safely. He's going in again. Again, <laughs> Zenith Blade back on towards him. Dark Binding this time on towards Sullivan. He does manage to put the book shot down. Mr. Rala is taking very low on health once again, though. It's actually, yeah, the ultimate here from Celera just straight away in the face of Mr. Rise. He couldn't get close enough to get the full damage from his Q, so he just used the ultimate to at least get some of the poke as well onto Rallis. He's level 6 now. Same goes for We Will Failure. Well, Mimer in the top lane takes some burst damage from Zazas. He was trying to farm between those two top towers. He's actually going to continue on around there and maybe take those golems as well. Mima's been doing a very good job up in this top lane. Of course, again, with the help from Impaler, where they denied some of the CS from Sarsus, he's been keeping this lead and now just farming away, trying to draw some attention. 
You know, it's funny, we all normally talk about when there's a Leona, it's like how passive they're probably going to be in the opening six levels. Van has been anything but passive, that's for sure. Going in every single time that NZ has played top off cooldown, diving in towards Mr. Rollinson. It's been causing him problems, and you can see in terms of Bob Salivar, he's miles ahead. Yeah, he still needs to stop getting hit by these bindings because he can take a lot of damage for it. But the thing about for, the thing for Vander here, he knows he's so tanky and Morgana has so little damage in the early stages here, generally in the game as a support. So he feels confident just going in again and again because even if he gets binded, he won't die from it. And that's why he can just keep engaging fights. And that's why some players really like to play Leona into Morgana. I know Crepo is one of them. Well, at the moment, Selfie is the one that's having problems in this mid lane. He's falling behind in farm. Bottom lane falling behind in farm. Top lane is the only one winning out. They're going to go in towards Overpower. He's not too worried about this. Sidesteps everything there. And well, just walks away. Didn't need to burn any summoner spells. Binding onto Selva here. Is he just baiting it out? They don't just actually start going. Here we go. We were failures going to be the one aggressed upon this. Mr. Rallers that they wanted though. There's going to be the solar flare going down. It's we will fail. Pops out the ultimate. He's going to catch up towards one. It will be Vanda. The culling comes through, but Yankos manages to block all of that out. Now Vanda's going to get caught out. Double tap coming oh, up for Mr. Rallers. That was very aggressive, and it would have been the death of him if that Zenith blade landed because it would have took him in towards tower range. At least we'd have to flash away instantly afterwards. But Rocket now pushing on to the tower. Very low on mana from both Subar crew members here. Selfie, he needs to roam down and help them. He's motoring, he's gonna get caught out. No cocoon landing on Mr. Rales. He's not gonna get close enough. The ward was in the right place at the right time to spot him out. Meanwhile, this mid lane actually, while that's all happening, Impaler actually going for the invade on towards the walls. He's getting some counter jumping in. The gangs from Impaler, the gangs from Yankers as well, to be honest. I mean, we haven't really seen the junglers in action too much. They haven't picked up any kills or assists. Just been farming away, showing a few times, then back their way when nothing actually happened from it. Overpower would go in this mid lane. Still farming away, Impaler, once again around him. Overpower this time around, may have to use that flash. He gets punted away, the ignite goes down. Impaler manages to land on him again. One more hit, there it is. Impaler gets himself the kill and the first of the Super Hot Crew. There we go, first jungle gang, which really worked out. Nice setup by Impaler, kicked Overpower back here. And there was just, if, he, if you don't flash the kick instantly, it's too late to flash afterwards because Impaler can just follow after you and finish you. We're taking some damage from Zalas there as he clubs at him with that. Uh, I don't know what actually it is. Uh, a club other than using that. It's an ice, ice thing. <laughs> it's what we use in Denmark to find our wives. <laughs> <laughs> that may well be the truth. Who knows? <laughs> Mima right now, though, in this top lane has a small CS advantage over Zazas. It's going to be working well for him. It'll be about 20 CS once his wave goes down. So that's super here claw his way back, but again, Shivana was expected to kind of do well in that lane. Salava finally taking down the first turret, of course, had a big CS advantage. It's a 30 CS gap over Mr. Rales, something you don't ordinarily see. Yeah, very, very unusual, at least, for Subar crew to be losing the lane, but it's what we talked about. Vander and Leona's been doing such a good job against Real Fela, and of course, the Grave pick into the Lucian. And the top lane, just to go back to it, normally you actually see the Trundle do really well early on against Shivana. And then Shivana, once she gets to like level 8, 9, can actually start fighting back a little bit a little bit onto the real late game where Tron will again will take over. This time around though, Mimer's just been doing a really good job from the start. And he's also going straight for Blade Rune King. So both of them going the same items here. We'll, we'll be a little bit squishy. Impaler though, going aggressive onto Yankos. Yeah, managing to land and keep on going aggressive on towards Yankos, doing the damage. Oh, oh baited. Defensive ball and shockwave baited in. They know that that's on cooldown and they're going to go happily to the red buff. Forcing way to cool down, teleport used by Sus in the top lane as well. Could go for a dive onto him, there are two members here. Ulti is up here from Impaler, Selfie can join in. Scary, scary for Sus. Well, they're not gonna have Backs away though. Mime is happy to keep this farm going as long as possible, I think he's yeah. doing a great job. They didn't job have to do it. Going, yeah. Didn't have to do it, just playing it safe, farming away. The minion wave died pretty quickly as well after teleport from Sus, so didn't go for it. Just back to the lane, Selfie can pick up his blue buff now. Starting to again, oh, he's keeping up on farm really well. He gave up one kill, yes, but he's at least been farming well and set up the gang as well for Impaler. Well, it's only standing just 14 minutes in at one kill apiece and one turret down, despite being a fairly active opening start to this match. Both AD carries now got themselves the pretty much majority of the first Bloodthirster item. Meanwhile, of course, the mid laner selfie. He's always going to be a little bit slow to get going because he has to get that tier built up, the catalyst for that Rod of Ages. Meanwhile, Athenes was picked up by Overpass, so he's going towards the standard Orianna start there. And the top lane as well, Blade of the Rune King being worked on by both of them. 
And we simply need to see once we get to the big team fight how Super Hard Crew wants to play him. Rocket, it's pretty standard. You want to engage, of course, with Bander, and then you jump into the face of them, you put the ball on someone from Overpower, you land ultimate, and you have this wombo combo of AoE and a lot of damage in the face, and Grace will be there with his damage. Everything just piles on the Super Hard Crew. But Super Hard Crew, they want to get on these longer teamfights where they can chase around, especially with the cast of them, with the mobility of Lee Sin, Shivana being very, very fast. So they want to have longer teamfights. They want to disengage it first and go back in. Ooh, the cocoon on self, he actually lands from Yankos, puts some good damage down towards him. He saw Overpower coming in there. Pink Ward was picked up by We Will Fail. It hasn't placed it yet, but I believe this may be the beginnings of a potential Dragon Star for oh, Super Hot Crew in Palacore Town. Does manage to safeguard away. Yankos is going to continue through. The Ignite is not going to be enough to take him down. He will be safe for now. Teleport is on cooldown for Sasus. He's still in the top lane. Ulti is gone from Overpower here. Rocket, they can start Dragon. They have to back away. They all they do it. They back away. Mine must well show himself in the mid lane. The so Super Hot Crew preventing a potential Dragon Start from Rocket here. Very smart play. And Overpower, he tried to get a kill so they could start it. Didn't work for them some sort of play, some sort of kick. Didn't work out, as you mentioned, Selfie. Continuing to keep that farm going. You said he's actually doing a pretty good job at keeping relatively close to Overpower, despite being that melee champion, despite of range. Big advantage for Overpower, despite being a kill down as well in a straight up lane matchup. Selva, he's a little bit out of sorts on his own at the moment. No support with him, so he's going to be careful he doesn't get caught out of position, giving Happy goal to Wee Wee Fighter as he strolls through the tormented soil there. But Subar Grush could have forced a dragon because, again, Teleport wasn't cooled down from Sasus. They saw him teleport to the tower. They could start up the dragon four members, have Mima teleporting down to join them, and therefore force the four members of Rocket away from the dragon. Instead, they've just been staying in the lane, and now it's actually Rocket starting the dragon, and Subar Crew is way out of position because the bottom lane just recalled. Yeah, great awareness from Rocket there. They completely knew. Oh, Impaler, he's caught out. There's a ward there. Are they going to go for all towards him? They're not going to lock him up and say they're going to stay away from that one. Rocket, great awareness of the fact that Super Hot Crew just taking that time to back away in the mid and bottom lane. But still, Super Hot Crew should not give up this Dragon to three when they have the teleport advantage. Now the teleport is ready for Sasus. He's going to lose his tower, however. He knows he's just going back to the golems. Don't want to risk getting dived by Selfie. Yeah, you can see Selfie up there. Mime is there. Impaler just off at the side, actually on the red buff right now. He's going to keep Red around the side there. Took it away the last time, of course. Vanda just running guard duties. Doesn't get caught out, though. Didn't go too deep. The rest of the Super Hot Crew waiting around to see if they can try and make a play. Mid lane being pinged out towards Overpower. So Super Hot Crew just playing it safe for now. Just playing it safe here. Actually, it's been quite some action, even though there's only one kill for each team. I mean,. Seen a lot of gangs trying to happen, seen a lot of action in the lanes, and now Wheel Fader will be engaged on. Support face off, Black Shield's not gonna last long enough, he's gonna get stunned up, but he manages to get away, flashes out of the solar flare. Three members of Rocket are left wanting for that kill. So the superior vision control here for Rocket means they could try and get a pick, forced away the flash, of course. Mid lane though, taking some. Not even gonna take any damage, because Mini Wave and of course Castling can't really push the tower, Lee Sin can't push the tower either. Yankos needs to be careful though. Selfie going blind into that bush. Kind of knew Yankos was coming around, but that was dangerous play. And he oh, got Yankos. The oh, the Shockwave failed back there, and he actually got drawn back towards him. Oh, he's gone in towards the Baron. The Baron turns around, hits him. Zazas is there to finish him off. Pillar of Ice goes down in and Paylor. It may be enough to slow him down for the Zenith play. Can he lock on towards him? Zazas is not gonna get close enough. And he will back away, but that was the kill on Selfie nonetheless. So again, very risky play by Selfie. You just said it yourself, he jumps into a bush, there's no vision for him. Happens to meet Jangus in there, it looked all planned that he was going to try and catch him out. But Jangus, he saw him coming in, landed a cocoon, and now Telebot in his mid lane. Well, it's going to be too late, that tower's going to go down, there we go. Now Mime is in all sorts of trouble, he's caught out, there's four members, he's dived in towards them. Rockout actually quite happily running away from this one. Coming around the side, Mr. Ral has managed to pull the cooling down, Vanda manages to take all the damage. Is it going to be enough? Nick Knight goes on towards him, he does manage to go down, but look at the turnaround from Rockout, is it going to be enough? Salamar, quick heal comes out there. He does keep him alive, and it's another two kills for Rocket. And a huge, huge team fight for Rocket here. First of all, they got the tower in the mid lane, and then the fight here. Subar crew again. 
They go over aggressive. They keep chasing for these kills, and Rocket can just turn it around. They won't be able to take this mid tower here because there's plenty of wave there for Rocket. Selfie desperately trying to search for a kill, trying to get something going instead. They're going to have to make their way down towards his bottom. They could take this turret if they head it down there, but let's check out this fight. Yeah, so again, Mr. Rallis is far away here, so it's only three members from two bot crew in here. Teleport comes down, tower is already gone. The ulti here from Mime actually pushes people away from the stun of Weevil Failure, and yet they keep chasing. From here on, they don't have to keep going. Impaler jumps under the tower, easy stun for Vander, and now he's dead. That's it. Zelovar, he's a man, he goes very aggressive, actually gets landed by very good binding. Uh, okay, hit by good binding from Weevil Failure. The heal though is enough to keep him alive. And again, Super Hard Crew, they over chase. Flashed out of the Tormented Soul just at the end there, not too sure whether it would have killed him, but. Better to be safe than sorry. I think Darian may well have approved of that play from Sullivan. Manly play. For sure. Was, uh, calling Candy Panda earlier on. So, Selfie at the moment. He's really trying to make himself relevant in this game. He's got to try He's trying and work too hard. his way back in there. Yeah, as you mentioned, trying to uh, try and make the plays a little too eagerly. I'm not even sure what his play was beforehand when he jumped into the bush here where Yankos was waiting for him. Because. Yeah, he could jump in and ward it, but you don't even need to just ward it from a distance. You don't have to jump into the bush and face check potentially someone from Rocket. So. Well, and the problem is, of course, horse, on the new Cassidins, when you do jump in, that, you know, the mana cost of jumping back out, of and of course the cooldown, is quite big now. It's not the same old Cassidin of old and with him. It doesn't have flash available. It is going to be a problem. Mima up against Zazas. Both have themselves the Blade of the Rune King and a Giant's Belt. Ninja Tabby was picked up by Mima, whereas Zazas, of course, went for the Mercury Treads. But it seems that those two are fairly close in their levels right now in terms of engagement. Yeah, again, Blazer and King on both, so focusing on the ability to split push against each other. We need some some tankiness, of course, on Sazos before he can really start to duel because he's been behind all game to Mima here. And he, there's been a lot of pressure on Sazos actually in this laning phase. And Mima just happily staying around. One of force fights again, but at this time there's a red buff on Trundle. He's a level behind at the moment, as you said, red buff on him. He did get a kill in this to assist in the previous engagement. So in terms of gold, I believe they are actually pretty even. Yeah, just a couple of gold between the two. You can see it's around about... <laughs> couldn't be much gold. more. Yeah, couldn't be much closer, really. Uh, well, it could. It could be 10 gold closer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 50 seconds on the Dragon, that will certainly be the next focus target. But you can see Super Hot Group, they want to take this bottom turret. They are currently pinging on the top of Impaler's head. And they may try and catch him out here as he goes looking in towards the Rock Hat jungle. And also just in general, look down in the jungle here of Rocket. Top side, a lot of wards. They're making sure nobody's going to get caught out here. Down the bottom side now, Vander is there. Put up a ward of the blue buff as well to see if Super crew want to try and set something up. So the dragon coming up here at least, they need some wards in the river, but everything behind them is carefully warded and they can see everything happening. Good vision coverage right now, Rocket. And they are playing very defensively in the field, despite the fact they are 4-1 up. They are Playing like a team that's behind, honestly, because they want overpower to get going. Salva, though, he's playing pretty aggressive. You saw him dash in towards Selfie there. So he absolutely feels he would win that fight. So Rocket is waiting for Sasus to become stronger than Mimer, and also they're playing for the team fight, so they want objectives they can fight around. And look at Sasus here. A lot of damage onto Mimer, forcing him away. Yeah, no blade the rune king used by either of them there. Dragon is up. That seems to be the focus. I think it was Mimer that just wanted to run away and make his way down the river. Instead, Zaz has put a good bit of punishment down on towards him, so he's going to be coming into this fight around about 1,000 hit points down. And if Rocket can stall out this dragon here, then Zazas will be able to take the tower up top lane. Subar crew needs to start it instantly or start pushing somewhere to force a teleport, or else they're going to give away a free tower. You can see Zazas in that bottom corner beating away the turret. Subar crew going to try and take the time to get the middle turret, but the minion wave was wiped out instantly, and Rocket well, they've stolen the march on Super Hot Crew here. Yeah, I have no idea why Mimer ran away from the lane and then Super Hot Crew were not in a position to either take mid tower, start up the dragon to do anything. So now he's just going to return to the lane, giving up the free tower, unless he felt like he couldn't even hold the tower against Trundle. Well, there's even going to be a chunk of damage on towards that inner turret. Now you can see the pink wards going down. That inner turret down half the hit point. <laughs> Thinking of finishing it. Well, that was just a. a Terrible play by Super Hot Crew simply because now the dragon's gonna go across the rock at and well Super Hot Crew just let Rocket oh, take steal it. I don't think he's gonna go for it. Is he gonna hang around? I don't think he will. No, and that's a second dragon for Rocket and well 
That was a swift turnaround in fortunes for Rocket. They've managed to build themselves up a giant build. Mimer does go for it. Pounces in on towards Zazas. Blade of the Rune King popped by Zazas, but not by Mimer. And the thing is, Rocket don't even have to do anything special right here. It's actually Super Hot Crew handing pretty much everything over to them. Oh, do you want to take my top tower? I'm just going to run down the river, and then we're going to run back after you just killed my tower. I mean, Zazas was like, okay, I'm just going to take your tower. I don't have to do anything special. The dragon as well. Rocket starts the dragon. Subaru crew is not in a position to stop it. They want to try and steal it. Rocket, however, they knew, okay, we stopped the damage now. The Sonic Wave is on it. Not going to do the same mistake Subaru crew did yesterday with the Baron. Well, I think they were expecting a more concerted effort on the mid lane tower because you can see Overpower everywhere was there to, ready to defend and they were just like, well, I've hit the wave and not doing anything about And you're going to need your AD carried in. Yeah. Mr. Rallis wasn't in the mid lane to push the tower, so Overpower just walked in, instant cleared the wave, and they're castled in, they lease in, and they're Shivana. I was like, oh, we're all melee champions, fine. We're not going to get any damage on the tower and just going to back away. And damage already done, a lot of free gold for, for Rocket and they took full advantage of it. Well, Selfie has now finally got himself that Ceres in place from Rod of Ages. Meanwhile, of course, Overpower, you can see, has got that Rabadon's Death Cap along with the Athenes he had earlier and the beginning of either a Zonia's or a uh, DFG. We'll see which way he goes with that should one. Should be a Zonia's. Yeah, I would assume it'd be a Zonia's. And that's that's a problem for Super Hot Crew because they've taken so long to get Selfie going. He hasn't been able to pick up any free kills, hasn't been really picking up any assists because there simply has only been one kill in the game for them. And that may well put him a little bit too far behind. Jankos gets a quick burst on Impaler. He's feeling confident Impaler on Lee Sinner, you feel. Yeah, I mean, same goes for Selfie, of course. They're trying to make some plays. They're trying to find these small fights in the jungle, but Rocket every single time just punished him for it and turned it around. And we actually see Mimer. He went straight towards the bot lane, didn't want to go back to the top lane here because they want to send Selfie up now to get some farm and also Mimer against, against Trundle. He didn't really want to go for the duel. We've seen it going back and forth. Sasa's been the guy now winning out on it. Well, with 26 minutes gone, we're already past the point that SK Gaming had already beaten Copenhagen Walls in uh, convincingly, honestly. But Rocket at the moment have a big advantage. We will fail as the focus target there. Black Shield was used on himself. Okay, not successfully landing a gank this time around. Zazis, he's going to head back down the bottom. Mimer will get himself that bottom through with this wave. Zazis is simply cutting off the minions. So this time it was actually super hard crew to pick up a tower. There was teleport on Zazis. He could have teleported down to the bottom lane to try and defend it. However, he didn't want to use it when Mimer still had his teleport up, so he couldn't get in a disadvantage later on. That's why they gave up the tower. And again, they try and rotate him around so he's in the same lane as Mimer so they can duel each other and also they keep the teleports the same place. Super Hot Crew did manage to clear out the pink ward coverage that Rockhand had built themselves on the Baron. They have still got one in the death push there. Well, this is happening. We can see Zazas once again shoving back down that bottom lane. They've got some clearing out the farm and the Super Hot Crew, they want to try and get some of that ward coverage cleared. That's what they can see Super Hot Crew. Selfie going in already with the Black Shield on prepared. They expected someone in that death push. So Rocket now. Could actually group up four members in the mid lane, keep Sasus to split push and start pushing down and force Super Hot Crew to either engage in a team fight or just try and hold the tower and therefore Rocket could take control of the map, get in the jungle of Super Hot Crew, start warding it up, get full vision control and dictate the map. For now they've just been farming around a little bit. I'm not sure if they're waiting for the hourglass on our overpower before they really want to start grouping up and forcing team fights, but they are strong enough also because they are ahead to at least force something and get Subar crew in a position they don't want to be in. Yeah, we've seen Zazas and Mimer poking at one another now and again, but still not too aggressive between the two. Nobody really sure of who is the stronger. Impaler spotting out and clearing the ward there. Found a thought about it, going in with the Zenith play, but instead I think was given the, the, the shake from Yankos, didn't want to follow through. Pink Ward again being cleared out by Super Crew. This time Impaler may get locked up. You can see Sullivan putting some good damage down towards him. It's half the hit point shredded off Impaler in just a couple of quick bursts. Yeah, pretty good damage. Vanda was waiting with his ulti. He wanted him to safeguard first. Then he could ult him at least force a flash away. He was too far away, however, so he didn't actually use it. Now, Rocket. Grouping in the mid lane, Salvador, he just recalled to base, so he won't be able to join the team. And Sel Selfie, staying around his bottom lane. Mimer can try and bait out a fight, and then Selfie will join in. Well, I think 
I think he just got spotted by the I minion. I think he got spotted by the minion, or Zazas was aware of it because he was just thinking, well, why is Mima suddenly being aggressive? He hasn't been for a very long time. Mima has built himself a good CS advantage over Zazas, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, that's countered by the kill and assist. So, slow game this time around. 29 minutes gone, just 4-1 in kills. It was a pretty open start, of course, with a lot of aggression going between the two teams, but not a lot of kills. Items starting to stack in here. You can see Selfie. Oh, hello! The ward is a Baron cheeky pit. Baron started off by Rocket, but as you mentioned, that ward tucked away in the corner. It won't get spotted out by the yeah. pink ward. You can see the vision not quite there. Super Hot Crew aware of this one. They're going to let it play out for a while until they go move in, and they're not actually spotted right now. Now they're going to move in. And Yanko's already down to 50%. The rest are here to tell about coming. They're going to go in towards it. Yanko's taken low, as you mentioned. He's going to be the focus target. Repels away. Quick call. I'm at, uh, we will fail to get locked in. Rockat turning the kills around. Selma's still alive. He finally gets dropped down by Selfie. Yanko's coming around the side. Oh! Selfie's found himself too. Can he manage to get one of them? He gets one. Guys, get Fander down. But no, Zazas is pounding on towards hit. him. He gets himself the triple, but they get cleared out. Overpower's getting locked up. Wow. Mama can't get quite close to him. A great pillar of ice from Zazas. Mr. Raleigh is waiting in the wings and it was a three for three the baron did not go to anyone despite being so so low at the start of that fight and rocket they were caught inside the baron pit here Yengos was already down to 50 percent Selva, he tried to dash over the wall he actually managed to hit straight into the wall so it was an easy target for super hard crew to kill here's the replay this ward here is so so smart for super hard crew so they spotted teleport to it Yangos, he's solo he needs to get out of the fight instantly that's why he won't even be there to try and smite notice Selva. He's gonna be the target for Mimer here. He tries to dash over the wall just in a second and actually managed to hit straight into the wall, so he's an easy target for him to kill. In the back though, Mr. Riley to follow damage. And then Selfie, finally a big play for him actually pays off. Picks up a double kill, will die though from the very last hit from Zazi. But three kills is exactly what Selfie needed to get going. You saw how getting away that pillar of ice, if it all there to keep them alive. However, Super Hot Crew off the back of that did take down the mid turret. They saw them take the dragon there in the bottom yep. corner as well, picking up the blue buff for Selfie. And that actually pulls them straight back in there. Just a 2,000 gold difference between them and Rocket. So basically just a mistake by Rocket placing the pink ward so they couldn't spot around the corners. And Super Hot Crew noticed therefore they could put a ward and make sure they would have full vision of the Baron Pit. Rocket thought it was cleared. That's why they could start it with only two members and it backfired for them. They are still ahead, however. And seems still to be focusing on this Baron here. At least want to now clear everything around it, make sure they have full vision control. Yeah, absolutely want to make sure it's clear this time around. Lots of sweeping lenses being used. So, Rockat, despite having a lead, are struggling to get themselves any advantage built up over the Super Arc crew. Still just three towers apiece and all those inner turrets standing for both teams. And honestly, if you look at the map, none of the waves are pushing, none of the no concerted effort, honestly, anywhere on the map. And we need more pink wards, we need more sweeping lenses from Rocket if they really want to take full control of this, of this Baron Pit. They went in there, used both, or used one of them, and instantly, well, Super Crew just went back in, warded back up, and Rocket actually didn't manage to do anything with their little mission. Could also be upgrading your sweeping lens from Vanda's side, so that at least they can clear a few more wards with it. Yeah, you can see, of course, that Super Hot Crew comes out four of those sweeping lenses. Well, Rocket, no. Um, have the two. So Super Hot Crew are the ones that are looking to maybe be a little more aggressive in their play. Pink Ward's though being picked up once again by Vanda. So we'll see that probably going to get placed towards the Baron Pit area. Selfie is backing up Mimo once again here, hoping to try and catch out Zazas. They want to bait something out here, because if they can get a kill onto Zazas here, two members can just push up towards the inhibitor, and the rest of the Super Crew can stop the Baron if Rocket starts it. And here is the bait. Oh, they went way too early on that one. I got a feel they're going to have to dive right into the tower. Only took down half their hit points, while the rest of Rocket do collapse in towards them. It is buying time in the mid lane, though, for Mr. Rales to try and push up towards the tower, which is why Rocket are a little unsure about how they can push across. It is buying time for Selfie and Mimo and they're getting some damage down, but the rest of Rockat do collapse in towards them. Solar Flare's not going to be used just yet. They do manage to get the Zenith Blade on Mimer, and Vanda will just step away. It's port time for Super Hot Crew to finally break the deadlock and take themselves the inner mid turret. Yeah, so Selva was back in the base when Rocket tried to start a fight down here in the bottom lane, so there was no way for in this mid lane, and therefore Super Hot Crew could just push it up. Mimer was the target for Vander, but of course, he doesn't even care. He could even jump away with his ulti in case something should have happened. So good response here from Super Hot Crew, and now they're actually the one taking advantage of Rocket, sending too many members to the wrong place. So, 
Items being picked up once again. Everybody backs away. Warmark's being picked up by Zazas. That's going to make him stronger, that's for sure. But it's still. Also, uh, Banshee's Veil was picked up by Selva, so the AD carrot getting himself covered off. Starting to get a little bit worried, maybe, about Miss Selfie. The only way for Rocket to deal with Selfie at this point is if they force something. If they group up and start pushing down something somewhere and force Selfie to be there for a potential team fight. Otherwise, he's just going to roam around the map. Every time Mimer fights against Sasus, there's a chance Selfie will join in and turn it in favor of Super Hard Crew. So Rocket need to be the team to engage somewhere, to start something, to start an objective. And this time, they learned to put the pink ward further inside the pit. <laughs> a little step further in there. Ooh, Impaler. He can't see them now. Now he can! And just to get the sonic wave on towards Yankos, spots the rest of Rocket and was a little unsure and wisely checked it first. Zazas takes a quick dark binding, quick burst from Selfie. Selfie's starting to feel much more confident now. Of course, he was aggressive at the start, but this time he's got the power to back it up. Starting to get quite a lot of damage here, and we all know how strong Kassadin is in the late game. If there's one champion you want to have in the late game, I think it's going to be Kassadin. I'd rather have Jax. Yeah, okay, fine. We could argue. <laughs> I like Jax too. <laughs> Jax is definitely seemed to work out well for Freddy in the last match. But uh, Mimer's getting himself a lot of free time in that bottom wave. They want to do that? it again. They want to do the exact same thing here. Selva is going to dash over the wall, join in to try and two-man it. Mimer is pushing so far up in this bottom lane. Super could know something is wrong here because Rocket was nowhere to see on the map, so that's yeah. why they're moving towards the Baron. Remember, Mimer got a lot of damage on that inner turret earlier on. You can see he's bursting it down. Now they've spotted it. Rocket trying to protect this one. There's the teleport. Is it a bait, though? Is it going to work out oh, for nice. them? You can see Mimer coming in, pouncing across there. We will fail it with the ultimate running. Vanda taking low. He gets burst down. Yankos in all sorts of trouble. He's going to get locked up, tries to repel. Shockwave only pulling in Impaler. The Yankos is going to finally get taken down at the side. Or will he? He will go down. Mr. Rala's bursting down. Overpower's going to get picked out here. It's a double already for Selfie. Make that a double for uh, Mr. Rales, I think, as well. And Zaz is the only man standing. And Super Hog, who once again come out on top in the Baron fight. And again, it's Rocket starting the Baron because they feel like it's the only option they have at the moment. And Super Hog, they know instantly something is wrong. Go in here. Two members are caught in the pit. The rest is out of position. And we will fail it once we get the replay going here. Notice him in the start of the fight. He flash binds onto overpower, so he's forced to flash away and won't do any damage in the start. Notice we will fail it here on Morgana. And also notice to Rocket how much split they are. Like how split they are. So much out of position. We will fail it, landing a beautiful flash binding overpower now. Early hourglass. And also needs to flash away afterwards. So he's so far done no damage in this fight. The first kind of damage now is when he throws in the ball. If you're waiting in the bush a little bit, he's been out of the fight. The rest of Super Hard Crew can just clean up Rocket. They, they don't have enough damage to do pretty much anything to Super Hard Crew. It took them so long to get We Will Fail them. He's on next to nothing and then managed to hold out in there long enough. There's ultimate procced off on three members of Rocket. So great fight for Super Hot Crew and We Will Fail the new man replacing Mixer, of course, who played last split. Seemingly stepping up the game a little bit for the Super Hot Crew. And of course, another double kill for Selfie. Takes it to 5-3-2. It's exactly what he was trying to do earlier on, but now he's got the ability power to back it up. Now the Zonya's Hourglass completed as well. Void Staff in there. Still yet to get his Tier 2 boots, though. <laughs> you don't really need them. Cassidy just jumping around. Of course, the Magic Pen could help. But it's just weird for me with Rocket. I mean, they were ahead. Had a good combat at the moment. They could push down, force a team fight when Selfie was still weak and couldn't actually join in for fights. If he jumped into your face, he would just be instantly bursted down. He didn't have enough damage to take out a target as well. And that's where they started the first Baron. The ward was there. Subar crew spotted them. We turned it around, got a lot of kills, got objectives, and now they tried again. Same thing happened. Subar crew was there and just been winning the fights. Well, we can see every game time is much in favor of Super Hot Crew when you start hitting these levels. They are used to playing the late game, that's for sure. This inner turret was taking some damage early on. Selfie looking to try and get around the backside there. Has put a ping wall down, he's got Mimo with him. They are spotted out though, around the side, and they're going to clear that ping wall, but they do that at the cost of the inner turret. And Super Hot Crew going to continue keeping that pressure down on the inner inhibitor turret in this mid lane. I don't think they're going to make too much of an effort to dive in towards it, but now with five members of Baron, who knows? It's also one of the points in the game where Graves becomes a lot weaker. Also, his wave clear is very risky because he needs to get so close to the minion wave with his box shot to hit multiple minions. So Super Hard Crew can pressure multiple lanes. As long as Overpower isn't there to just instantly clear the first wave, they can get damage onto the tower, back away, go in for the next wave, get some damage. 
and it means they can pressure multiple lanes and always get some damage and at some point they're gonna get the towers down. These big late games are starting to become commonplace here in Europe and super hot crew. No exception as they try and push down. This is going to be another inner turret gain, the sixth of the game for the Super Hot crew. Mimer's getting caught out by Zazas, but you can see he's quite happily taking a lot of punishment out there. Selfie actually went aggressive onto Zazas. Zazas now to get the shield from Overpower. Go defensive. Pillar of Ice just annoying them more than anything. <laughs> Not really doing a lot to follow through. For now, though, Rocket just trying to hold off. They lost every single out of turret, so the only thing they can do now is actually rotate between the three towers in the base trying to wave clear left and right and just wait for Super Hard Crew to start something or you can see Vander just trying to engage if Super Hard Crew is split up in multiple lanes he tries to engage on someone and just go for the kill if they get the kill they can get some more time to farm up or maybe even push out of the base and try and get some gold somewhere and you know at the start of that first Baron fight Rocket had about three four thousand gold advantage yeah and now seven thousand gold behind Super Hard Crew through simply two Failed Baron fights and a bunch of objectives picked up by Super Hot Crew. I mean, don't do Baron kits. It is very, very dangerous, especially if you misplace your pink ward and Super Hot Crew just punish you. I for think it. all the point is with the with these pro teams in a, a 5v5 environment when they know something's up. They're not stupid. They know they're like they're looking for the vision. There's like no one visible around the map. Well, okay, especially because Rocket had already, already done it once. Yeah, it just it sends your spider singles. Tingles, uh, spider sense is tingling, and the fact that mine was like, guys, I am hitting this tower for free right now. Check the Baron. Yeah, <laughs> that is for sure. It's a dangerous, dangerous play to go for Baron in a straight up five-year fight, unless you are going to peel. And Rocket didn't seem ready to peel. They actually wanted to take the Baron. No, but they, again, they're also completely out of position. Yeah. So in the last team fight, Vander was on, was in one place trying to engage. Two members were still in the Baron pit. Two other members ran in from the Wraith camp. So. They were completely split up, and then we will fail it with his flash binding. Pretty much forced overpower to instant hourglass. Flash away, did absolutely no damage in the fight because of this binding. And Rocket just lost the fight straight up. And while the first Baron, if everything was clear, there was no vision, could be a good idea. They could have picked it up because Subaru crew wouldn't have expected. It's still a risky play, especially because they didn't need it. They could have pushed up, forced something because they were stronger at the point. Oh, so certainly a big glowing <laughs> patches fail on Salavar that. He says slight spectator visual bug there, but uh, he's certainly got a big defensive orb around him nevertheless. We will fail out, has put up some good numbers so far. He's been flashing into the fights, honestly, and now he's got himself a uh, Warden's Mail in there, starting to feel a little bit more confident. Salva has been the one that's trying to burst him down. Of course, not too worried about those shock waves. And it's been working out for him so far. He's been the guy, as you mentioned in that last big fight, landed the Dark Binding on Overpower, flashed in towards him, put that ultimate down, and the shackles actually went off on three members. So Also in the laning phase, I mean, when Mr. Rallis took a lot of damage early on, it was We Will Failure who landed a few bindings in a row, so Selva all of a sudden was forced to recall, and then Subar Crew could get some much needed farm in a bottom lane, which they lost, yes, but still, good bindings, made at least sure they could get some farm. Well, the Baron is up in a minute's time. Dragon, you can see in just under 1 minute 10. 15 at the moment, it will be up. But let's see whether Rocket actually fancy this start. I'm not too sure if they will. You can see, obviously, it's showing that the Super Hot crew do have Baron. They don't. I can assure you that it has run out. It's not uh, sticking around forever. It is uh, the Baron has just worn off. It's simply a spectator bug right now on the screen we're looking at. But what are we thinking? Are they going to go for another Baron? Or are they simply going to try and keep pushing? Because you can see in the bottom lane, Mimer is continuing to keep that wave going. It's keeping Zazas busy. They may actually go for an engagement here. So yeah, they're basically looking for a fight in the jungle. Here we go. Teleport comes in. Oh, Yankos gets punted out. He's got nowhere to repel to. He gets caught down. There's the pick that we needed. And now Zazas, he's come to join the fight, but he's going to get separated from the rest of his team. He's going to try and run away, but you cannot escape the Cassidy. And when Lee Sin, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> Lee Sin, Mr. Rallis is following <laughs> you up on Lucian. He will almost certainly get your number. And then you just tank this tower here, take it down, get the inhibitor, could even go for the bottom lane where the wave is pushing up as well. Get two inhibitors, go back towards the Baron, so plenty of time. Teleport was also used from Sasus. Subar crew are in full control here. And they didn't even need to clear all the vision from Rocket. They were just actually running around in the jungle and Rocket was there trying to ward up and just got caught out of position. With the Sunfire Kate, Randy and Zoman and a Thorn Mail, you can happily tank that turret for days. And 
that's exactly what Mimer did. Gets pulled in by the Shockwave, they're not too worried about that one. Overpower now with that ultimate down, they're gonna pounce in. Mimer's gone a little too deep on this one. Overpower's gonna be the focus target though, Selfie with the Zonyas. Overpower with the Zonyas, he's not gonna get back out of that one. It's a double picked up by Impaler on his Lee Sin. There's gonna be the inhibitor going down, and the Super Hot Crew, they're gonna roll on through Rockat's base. It will be the Super Hot Crew taking victory here in game five of day two of Super Week. So despite a weak start from Super Hot Crew in this game, they punished Rocket for their Baron attempt, turned everything around, Sophie got all the kills he needed, and then that was game over. Fed Cassidy. And unlike Rocket, you know, the Baron was up, but they didn't feel they needed it. They simply got themselves a pick, and that's what they were looking for in that jungle. And the Super Hot Crew, well, finally, get themselves a Big win over Rocket, considering yeah. it was 3-1 in the spring. That's a very good start to the summer for the Super Hot Crew. But we have to admit, 